Other than the incredibly cool visual effects it added to the vivid MCU catalog, Ant-Man and the Wasp had an undeniably important role in shaping up Marvel's cinematic timeline. Ant-Man and the Wasp tactfully set the groundwork of trapping Scott Lang in the Quantum Realm so that he could conveniently return in Endgame to show the Avengers how to fiddle with time travel. Fascinating. Expendable quantum realms that do away with plot ambiguities and continuity errors might become commonplace in the Marvel Cinematic Universe going forward. We gotta do something with it. But how much do we know about them from the MCU's point of view? We looked at Scott Lang's stint in the quantum realm to answer that question for you, and here is what we know so far. Oh, and since we can't discuss time travel in the MCU without looking at some key plot points, please note that there will be spoilers ahead. All the speculation and complex time travel theories surrounding Ant-Man's rescue from the Quantum Realm turned to dust when Avengers Endgame zeroed in on a rat to do their work. But fans had no time to marinate in that because we were immediately treated to a sweet reunion between Scott and his daughter Cassie. This is where the magic of the Quantum Realm and the time travel it facilitated in Endgame began to visually set in. Cassie, who was just about 9 or 10 years old when we last saw her on screen, looked like a teenager in Avengers Endgame after Lang sought her out. We know that Scott returned five years after the snap in Infinity War, which snuffed out half the world's population, including Scott's friends Hank Pym, Janet Van Dyne, and their daughter Hope. This perfectly lined up with Cassie's grown-up appearance, which was amongst the few distinctive indications of the amount of time that had gone by since Infinity War. That'll work. The next group of people Scott immediately rushed to meet was Steve Rogers and Natasha Romanoff. Talking about the time he went to the Quantum Realm, Lang went on to explain that he only spent what felt like five hours there, even if five whole years had gone by on Earth. The revelation that the Avengers had been sitting on a time-traveling gold mine for five years almost threatened to break the gloomy post-apocalyptic mood of Endgame. Natasha cracked a well-deserved joke about emailing raccoons, and the rest, as you know, is cinematic history. Or, a uh, history, if you get my drift. Right? It doesn't take a die-hard Marvel fan to know that the slightest whiff of time travel in any universe signals that there are complicated concepts at work at the very least. But the Quantum Realm in this case entails way more than some run-of-the-mill sci-fi time-twisting. Anything you do could have serious repercussions on future events, do you understand? Remember when Steve Rogers called the Quantum Realm a time machine in Endgame? Are you talking about a time machine? Scott didn't quite agree to that oversimplification, but he didn't sit around nitpicking over the optics of it because it was more important to, I don't know, save the world at that point. All right, George, now you've had your little joke. Suppose you tell us what this contraption's really for. What the movie essentially did here, though, was that it established the Quantum Realm's significance not just for itself, but for the foreseeable future of the entire MCU. And since I don't have to run off to save the world just yet, I looked into some literature that elaborates the nature of the elusive Quantum Realm. According to the essay that physicist Spiridon Michalakis wrote for The Wrap, the Quantum Realm is an abstract space beyond the limited conceptual reach of classic physics, time, or even reality. It's a place where dimensions like space and time are just a part of what he calls a soup of pure possibilities. Any version of reality can be engineered like a piece of code in this microscopic dimension. There are only a few ways in which this mystical dimension can be entered, and Hank Pym knew that one of them involved the space-time altering dynamics of uncontrolled shrinking. Ant-Man could therefore navigate it by using the revolutionary Pym particles to go subatomic. The Quantum Realm is also accessible by Doctor Strange through magic. In Endgame, the function of the Quantum Realm boils down to being a dimension which can be entered at a particular point in time and exited at another. Tony remarkably figured out how to do this in one sitting, but if you're anybody else, you might be more likely to reach out for a comforting sandwich and take your time with it. Time travel! Scott Lang's size-altering powers tie him to the Quantum Realm seamlessly, and his first brush with it came during his clash with Darren Cross in Ant-Man. Hank Pym had warned him not to mess with the regulator on the Ant-Man suit, which controlled its shrinking capacities. But he broke that rule when going subatomic seemed like the only way to destroy Yellow Jacket. Scott somehow avoided shrinking into subatomic obscurity like Janet Van Dyne by swapping the red disc on his regulator with the blue one. This set the ball rolling for Janet's successful rescue in Ant-Man and the Wasp, but that doesn't automatically make the Quantum Realm a conceptual cakewalk. Scott and Janet both survived the Quantum Realm, but their experiences with it were drastically different. Janet was stuck there for 30 years with no end in sight, versus Scott, whose five-hour QR journey feels more like an interdimensional picnic. 
As Scott got ready to go back into the Quantum Realm in Ant-Man and the Wasp to retrieve quantum energy, Janet warned him not to get sucked into the realm's vortex. While this may have been a nod to the realm's life-altering powers, it is certain that the realm does not have the same rules for all those who enter it. Scott Lang's five hours in the realm cannot therefore be used as a standard of time conversion between the Quantum Realm and the Macroverse. Now that's the most important question to which I hope to find an answer. Captain Marvel has been known to be able to cut through space without aging in the comics, and she's constantly going on about helping other vulnerable civilizations in Endgame. This nicely fits in with the idea of her perfecting Quantum Realm navigation, but it doesn't make the dimension any more accessible to the superheroes who lack her distinct powers. It takes some diabolical mathematics, years of preparation, and a good grasp on philosophical thinking to be able to survive the Quantum Realm without going insane. This explains why the Avengers didn't try to endlessly milk it to fix their problems. But seeing the overall trajectory of expansion that the MCU has embarked upon, this could very likely change in the future. Can man control his destiny? Can he change the shape of things to come? Well, that's the end of my time travel with you today, so thank you for tuning into this discussion. Keep watching and subscribe to Screen Rant if you'd like to see our best videos curated in your feed. 